Welcome to Exponential Opportunities, where we deliver smart business growth advice from the best hustlers around. I'm Jason Trofe, and today I have the program Tommy Mello. Tommy grew his home service business to the $30 million mark with over 200 employees in 10 states by the age of 35. As founder of A1 Garage Doors, Tommy received Best Dealer Award and Super Service Award from multiple associations, including Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. A1 Garage Doors has over 470. 17 reviews on Google with almost a five-star average, and he's here to teach us how to do the same thing. Tommy was named Top Entrepreneur in Arizona under the age of 35 by the Arizona Republic, and his advice has appeared in multiple publications with millions of views, including Forbes, Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur.com, Huffington Post, and Small Business Trends. Currently, Tommy coaches small business owners how to dominate their local area and scale their business with cutting-edge strategy and tactics. All right, Tommy Mello, I'm excited to have you on here, man. I think that you're going to do a lot of good things for the clients that we have around the country. Um, And I wanted to just dig right into your brain and and figure out how you did what you did so quickly. Um, So, you know, I wanted to know, you know, what's the most common mistake that you see everyone in the local service business making? Yeah, well, I'm excited to be here, Jason, and I'm glad you had me on. And I, I get really, really excited and passionate about this stuff. And I think you'll you'll hear it throughout the podcast. But uh, again, I got to thank you for having me on. I'm really looking forward to this, and I'll jump right into it. Um, the biggest thing I see is so many of us jump into business, and we think I'm a good salesman. I do this job really well. Why wouldn't I go make this money for myself? And everybody seems to jump into business and think it's going to be easy from day one. And it's not. And the first is you don't have a plan. You don't. The first most important thing you need to do when you go into business is devise an organizational chart for the business. Now, if you're like me and you started out on your own, the organizational chart exists of many hats that I would wear. But at least I got it broken down into the main categories I know I'm going to have to replace. So you start there and then. So many businesses fail to have organization and time management skills. They jump in and they don't know what they need to get done that day and uh, they don't have accountability. One of the things I like to say is so many entrepreneurs replace activity with productivity and that's a huge mistake. I mean, they don't get results. And uh, insufficient planning, financial resources, and uh, they jump into this business and just expect things to happen to them. They say, I was making 200000 as a salesman. I know the margins are this much, but they're really not. It's a misconception that a lot of us think, oh, my God, that car costs this, but I know it only costs this to make. But there's so many other expenses. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, <laughs> totally. So if there's like, what would you say the top actionable tips that a business can do today would be if they want to like walk away from this interview and, and apply something in their business that actually affects their bottom line, what would be like that top actionable tip? You know, I, I couldn't pick one, so I put this into a few. Uh, first of all, you need to know what your USP is. It's your unique, you, unique selling proposition to the customers. And a lot of times people say, well, we're open late at night. Um, we, we've got background check guys. Well, look, at, I have all that stuff. I mean, most businesses have that. You really got to dig deeper. See, for my business, it's garage door service. Uh, Most companies carry 10,000 cycle springs. We have 80,000 cycle springs. We try to differentiate ourselves by better parts, better technicians, and really better, faster service. And we've actually been able to quantify that when we explain it to customers. So USP, uh, CRM. CRM is your customer relationship management system, and so many businesses fail at this. They use Excel, they use ones that they heard about. It's taken me five tries to find the perfect one for me. It's service tight and I don't make a penny by promoting them, but I will tell you this, I have every KPI you could think about with my business to create success. So CRM is super important. You know, you you're familiar with the profit with Marcus Lamone? Yeah, <laughs> you know, he preaches uh, people, process and product. Right. And I believe more in process because your process dictates the people, your your process dictates the product. The process develops everything within your business. So be process oriented, get great marketing, great systems, um, customer surveys. You got to take customer surveys. Uh, that's one of the things we're going to talk about later based on the questions. Uh, 
Borrow money when you don't need it. Get a line of credit. Whenever you need it, it won't be there. And it takes months and months to get it. So have that availability to have those financial services with you. And then the last one is uh, technicians. So many of us in the home service industry just rate our guys on sales. Well, there's really three attributes you need to look at. You got your sales, you got your technical, which means can they actually fix it properly? A lot of times, like in the HVAC business, I realize that they sell way higher than they ever have, but the guys don't know what they're doing like they used to know. So they hire salesmen that don't really know what they're doing, and then the guy that has lower sales is the guy that ends up the warranty guy to go fix all the problems. Mm. So having a better foundation for technical, which is, it starts with training, and then the third one is operational. Do you know how to use your iPad? Do you know how to not leave screws there? Do you know how to explain the warranty information? Those are three main key points that we forget about. And I know that was a long-winded answer, but I didn't feel like there was just one thing. There's, there, I picked five of them. So Yeah, no, that's good. So you had a Forbes article that I read, and actually our CEO, um, the, the founder of the business, and I say that like it's all important. This is a family business. That's my dad. So <laughs> he found your article. Here's how I actually found you. He brought in a Forbes article, put it in front of me, and he was like, look at this. And it's exa- talking about exactly who we target. And, you know, it was just, it was so in line with what we do that I was like, oh, who is this guy? And I tried to contact you as uh, on, in, in the author section, and there's, there's no link there. So I was digging around. I had to find you, man. So yeah. I wanted to ask you specifically about that. So, like, I mean, so the Forbes article is quality over quantity. And you mentioned that you made counterintuitive decisions, and I know this hard leap because we've made it. You made counterintuitive decisions in your marketing campaigns by focusing on the more expensive leads, and your costs went up, but your profits skyrocketed. Um, so explain what you mean exactly. Well, there, there's so many different lead sources out there, and I can tell you, I've done all of them. I've done outbound calls, I've done Craigslist, I've done stuff from Yelp, radio, TV, billboards, Tons of mailers. And uh, it really does matter on what the customer is and what they're looking for. And I'll give you a great example as uh, a parts call, someone calling my business saying, I'm looking for a genie remote control. Now, some people might consider that a lead and I still consider it a lead because we could turn that into an opportunity, but that's not a great call for me. A great call is, hey, I can't get out of my garage. I think the spring's busted. Can you get somebody out here right away? So. You really got to understand your demographic in, in, in the digital media side, we call it an avatar, who's your perfect customer, and uh, really get in front of those people. I, I work out paid for performance deals all the time, and one of the things they make you do is buy a base buy a lot of the time. They'll say, you got to spend this much amount of money, whether it's two grand, five grand, depending on what you're doing. And what I've always found is if they do pay per click, it's great. Well, we did something a few months ago where we do our own pay per click. We spent we spend six figures a month just on paid ads on, on Google. And uh, they said, hey, we got you this many leads and my guy who handles our PPC pay-per-click in-house, and I'm sorry to use all these acronyms, but it's pay-per-click, it's Google's paid ads. Uh, they said, uh, they said, hey, we got all these leads and he brought them into me. He goes, we actually got less leads than they got for the same amount of money, but look what the revenue was. Because we track our revenue per advertising source, we ended up doing three times with less leads yeah. what they yeah. did with, with their calls. So yeah. it, it's so true that you really got to look at what kind of leads you're getting and all leads are not created equal. And you really got to measure this. And, and it's scary what happens when you do measure it. So yeah. I go, you know, we got rid of Home Depot. No offense to Home Depot, but in the garage door industry, it just was not making us money. There was too many problems. We weren't making enough profit. So. We got to focus on the more profitable items and maybe it costs a little bit more money. Home Depot was a free lead, but we still weren't making money. So it's just a good example for us. Yeah, I think it's really hard to make that leap too because you are you feel like you're throwing money away. You know, your leads go down, uh, but, but, but you have to wait that gap where you're waiting <laughs> to see what's gonna happen because you just killed your funnel, <laughs> your volume, yep. you know, but then you could just triple your income if you're careful, if you're smart about it. So, yeah. so you, you brought up, you do uh, six figures in PPC. That's a big budget, man. So what marketing channels do you use? Like your entire marketing mix, what's your secret sauce for generating quality leads? You know, I, I, I do lead gen as a business. It's a separate side of something I work on. So I feel like there's nothing better than digital to this, 
this day and age, but it, it's coupled with so many things. I mean, if you knew my marketing budget, you'd be like, dude, it, it's pretty nuts. But but 70% of all services are found online, okay? And 70% of those are found on Google. So 49%, that's half of everything you do is found on Google. So I do believe uh, Google's the largest company in the world now. They took over uh, pretty much every other company. You know, there, there's Apple and there's Amazon, great companies, but uh, it's Google's world right now. They're, they're data aggregators. They're, the reason they went into Uber is because they wanted to collect more data. So while you're driving now and you're not in control of the wheel, you're going to be Googling they're grabbing more data. So it, it's pretty remarkable. Facebook is the same way, but I will say this. The, the, unfortunately, RSVP and Money Mailer and some of the, the, the people out there get a bad name just because they, you see, they want to go check out your brand online, okay? So I will say, tell you a secret to doing well, and yours is by far one of the best mailers we've ever done, but you got to put that, if I'm five stars on Google, if I'm five stars on Yelp, if I won the, the, the Torch Award on BBB, put that on your mailers. Use everything you can so they don't have to go look it up. And you'll actually get a lot better results that way because it's hard to really say, you know, I got results from this when they actually went online and Google got, Google got the, uh, credit. what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the credit for the lead. The credit, the credibility for the lead. Yeah. So, and interestingly enough, Jason, is Google rolled out a fourth algorithm. It's called Google Guaranteed. Yeah, I saw and, it. Uh, you're pretty familiar, I'm sure. Yeah. So. Most people listening might not know there's four things. There's uh, pay-per-click, there's your local search, and local's huge, and then there's organic, and now we got a fourth one. It's called the Google Guarantee Program. They guarantee up to $2,000. They do a background check through a company called Pinkerton. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy stuff, but it's not easy to get it through, but you have to do it. People say, I'm not gonna waste my time. I don't do that stuff. My, my cost per lead went down to a third of what it was. Through through this system, so that's amazing. I'd recommend getting validated. G Google's job is to give their users the best experience, and us as a business pays for it. And they're doing a great job. I mean, I'm not happy of how long it took us to get through the program, especially because I'm in ten states. But overall, uh, we're saving money, and and I'd recommend that to anybody that has their own business. It's to get that Google guarantee stamp. Yeah, man, I, I'm pushing that hard on all our clients. We have. Um, they're not. They're still rolling that out. Believe it or not, it's in. It's in. I don't know. At least ten states that I know of offhand. But like late seven, late 2017, it started popping up, and now it's in our California. Area. Yep. Yeah, and now now it's. Um, you know, I believe, and this is my my hunch on this, is the people who are late in the game and getting Google guaranteed are gonna suffer badly, and the line to get in and get guaranteed is going to get super long and then the bidding is start is going to start getting crazy. So right now, you're paying per call, not per click anymore. You can pay per call. You're actually right. talking to the person. That's that's an amazing jump. And if I'm going to be the searcher, the homeowner that goes on and looks for, oh, my AC broke. I need something real fast and this is guaranteed by Google up to $2,000." That is definitely who I'm calling first, for sure. And, and you know, and then that call is just going to steal from everybody who's paying a lot of money for SEO that is right below that. You know, I think it's going to change. The, it's a game changer. Like it is. That. It is. Google wants to own 90% of all the clicks. Google, Google right now, believe it or not, over 60% of people still go past those paid ads. Yep. But, you know, there, there's so much lobbying going on in D.C. right now because Google, if you go on your cell phone, they own the whole first page, you can scroll down, it's still paid stuff. So yep. it, it's it's interesting. I still think organic is valid. Totally, um, totally it's gotta be going, It's still going downhill in comparison to, to the local search, but we're gonna share a few tips here further down that I think I could really help the listeners dominate those listings. Cool, all right, let's move on. So you have 417 reviews last I checked and a 4.7 average. I was like blown away by that. How do you do it? What's your process? So th there's a, I use, I use a lot of different strategies, but the main thing is we give surveys. We give surveys through our CRM. So it's so simple. Would you use our company again? Press one. You make it so simple. You know, you heard that old expression, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And it really exists in, in everything we do. So you want to be able to identify happy customers, but then you want to be able to push them and make it simple for them to leave a good review. 
So we say, we spread the word to everybody, tell your friends, neighbors, family, Well, we do that through social media. And I actually made a whole video that gets sent out to everybody that's a happy customer, that gets delivered to them, email and through text message. And then all they gotta do is go online and if they say, I give them, now here's the secret sauce, you're not allowed to pay people for good reviews, but you could give them, uh, you could give them anything you want for taking a survey. I mean, have you ever got a dollar bill in the mail with a survey and you kind of feel forced to take it because you just got a buck to take it? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, you do. You staple the dollar to the letter? Yeah, thing. you staple the dollar. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same process. You yeah. say, thanks for taking the survey, but my secret sauce is I got, I got a guy that calls all the negative surveys and he says, we need to work this out. We obviously did not do a great job and we need to make this right. So we get in front of it. We still reward them for taking the survey, but we try to spread the word of the good stuff and get in front of the bad stuff. Yeah. And uh, you're allowed to say, check us out on Google. Check us out on Yelp. You're yeah. not allowed to say, go write me a five-star and I'll reward you. So there's there's a happy medium around that. Yeah, that we have... We got a system where we send our, our clients a link in the email that'll link them straight to Google or Facebook to get the review, but then Yelp's a tricky one. They won't let you link straight to it. You can suggest they go to Yelp on their own. It's about right. it. How, how do you get around that? You're doing pretty you good. You know, Yelp is, uh, Yelp's an interesting one. Um, I don't want to give away all my secrets, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are ways to find out if people use Yelp. See, Yelp's a tricky yeah. one because I'm not allowed to just go build a Yelp account and leave a good bad review for my brother-in-law or the company I hate. Yelp likes, everybody hates Yelp in the home service and most businesses. They go, forget Yelp, it's crap. I got so many things that get filtered. But little do they know, they really do think it's a Ponzi scheme. But I can tell you, I've been in the headquarters in San Francisco. I've been in the headquarters in Scottsdale. They put another one now, uh, I think, near DC. But the fact is that Google trusts, or Yelp trusts, People that have been yelping for a long time. Did you add your Facebook account? Did you do this? Did you do that? So I tell customers, listen, they say, I'd love to leave you a review on Yelp. I said, go ahead. But if you just built an account, there's really no point because it'll probably get filled. Yeah. So if you do, why don't you go, you know, the restaurant you ate at last time and six months down the line when you're ready for a tune up, review us then and it'll probably stick. I don't, we don't have to get fancy and try to cheat the system, but I will tell you this. My friends, neighbors, family, the people that I care about, I've worked on every one of their garage doors, okay? So it's not illegal to say, go check me out on Yelp from friends, neighbors, and family. Yelp doesn't say that's not, you're not allowed to have anybody, because we work on the family and friends' doors and neighbors' doors. Yeah. I mean, I've done my whole cul-de-sac. I mean, every single door in there. So, <laughs> you know, there, there's no there's no cheating the system, but what it is is it's really voicing the good stuff and getting in front of the bad stuff. and. I'll tell you what, bad companies don't like this idea because they're like, ooh, I don't want to be giving a customer a survey. I already know it's going to be shitty. And uh, excuse me, but uh, right. But you know, that's the thing is, it, it, that's that's not the way to look at this. Yeah, totally. You just got to get the good stuff out there and, and get the bad stuff uh, contained. Yeah. So, okay, so if I asked you to put into a simple checklist, like simple terms that listeners can, can put into action right now to dominate their local market, what would it be? Like in order of first things to do to like long term. Okay, so you gotta build an org chart and you need to create a process. You need to have a role for each employee. You can't have people wearing multiple hats because nobody has ownership or accountability. So take the time to build an org chart and really put it a process for each one. You know what I would do is I wear a blindfold to work one day, walk in and say, what do I see? Do I see people busting their butts, working hard? Do I see organization? If I was a customer, we get our blinders on so often and we don't know what customers first think. And you say we're a safe environment. We're very clean. We're respectful. But you walk into your office and you see stuff everywhere. You know, paper should not be on anybody's desk. You should either scan it, file it or throw it out all the time. There shouldn't be little notes everywhere for everything. And if you build that environment, you know, I had a guy walk in a year ago, a consultant that was actually helping me. And he said, do you have anybody here that's 75 or older? I said, no. He said, why are there calendars up everywhere? He said, do you guys not have Google calendar? I mean, the guy's 60. So, but that, that's the first thing. Number two is I'd start doing a search engine optimization because it takes three to six months. It's not something that happens overnight. Your online credibility, reputation is so important and it takes time. Um, I really, 
focus on, you know, some of the times we fish with a fishing pole, some of the times we fish with a, with a huge net. And what I mean by that is go after good employees, but don't just be on Indeed or uh, Zip Recruiter or Craigslist. Post ads everywhere. So often we spend, we'll post two ads on Craigslist a month, but but we'll spend 100000 on advertising. So you'll spend 70 bucks on Craigslist, but you'll spend 100000 Why not spend a lot more money getting the right people to do the job for you? So that's an, a, a big one. Um, uh, let's see here. So, so, and then the last thing is start thinking about getting that money because you will not get a loan when you need it. You get a loan when you don't need it. And it's just a line of credit. You don't have to use it. But I would say today, start thinking about that because opportunities will find you. Someday some company is going to, you know, another mailer company might come up to RSVP and say, look, I'm sick of it. it there's a snowstorm in, in Milwaukee. I'm selling the whole company. I'll do it for 40 cents on the dollar. And whoever's got the money then and there is going to be able to take advantage of that if it's a good deal. So it's very important to have that in the back of your mind because when you need it, it won't be there. But when you don't need it, it's good to have it. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> so those good. were the main things for that's that. good, man. So um, would you say – like how would you describe a perfect lead generation machine on your front end? You got you have that nailed down? Well, right now I have about 2,000 trackable phone numbers. Uh, my CRM, every single ad campaign I run has a separate phone number to it. Even even the different zones for the same mailer. So, for example, uh, at RSVP, if you had a different zone, I'd have a different tracking number because I A-B test. The misconception that a lot of owners have is let's A-B test all of our digital, but they don't do anything with paper. They don't try anything different. And if you A, B, test, and all that means is have a different call to action. Have some, some credibility with, uh, with some of the uh, local things going on. For example, there's a retirement area that if you're part of this group, everybody wants to use your company there. Uh, so that's a big one. And remember co-op. So many people forget co-op. So many of the vendors out there will pay for part of your marketing and get that money. And we all say, well, we're going to look into that. But nobody does. That could be 10, 15, 20 percent of your marketing campaign. So for anybody who doesn't understand what you mean there, explain co-op. So co-op, an example is my garage door openers will pay me 4 percent if I mention their openers in an ad. So an RSVP, if the if it makes up a tenth of the page, they'll give me 4 percent. So they see a big old garage door opener there. They'll pay me back if the marketing campaign costs uh, ten thousand dollars. They'll give me four hundred back as a check in the mail. Uh, and all these companies, whether you're in air conditioning, gutters, roofing, uh, home services, they will. Your manufacturers will pay you. And if they don't, uh, you need to really check that relationship out and see if it's really worth it. Because is this going to be a company that's going to last the the around time? I mean, literally, if they're not willing to put money into their brand. Because the whole point is they're able to get their brand out there, right? You're, the garage door openers we work with, they're like, yeah, we'll spend the money, a part of your marketing campaign, to let us be known too. So when the customer calls, they'll be asking for our product. So I think that's a pretty good definition of what co-op is. Is that what you were looking yep, for? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's good. So, so you mentioned you use direct mail. Who do you target? So there's a lot of analytics that we've been able to take. You got the age of the home, the income. Um, you want to try to target homeowners, obviously. You want to target, obviously, the ones with garage doors, in my case. Uh, but just think about this. If you target a home, and I, I live in Phoenix, so Scottsdale, a lot of homes have three or four garage, uh, garage doors and sometimes four air conditioning units and more gutters and more stucco, more painting. Uh, they want nicer things because they have more income to spend especially in this economy. I mean, there's never been a better time. It reminds me of the 2006 and seven times when it was just like people had so much money, but we haven't given as, as many bad loans, so I don't think it's a bubble. But uh, I can tell you that people are spending money, so you want us to really target the higher incomes, uh, the discretionary incomes, and, and you want to have a good message to them. You want to be micro-targeted to them. If, if you're sending out a home in Scottsdale, don't send them a house – in Florida or Michigan because it doesn't look don't have that on your ad if you're sending out in a certain area don't have three area codes 
have the one for that area. You know, so many people, it looks, I've seen mailers come with five phone numbers on them. I'm like, I'm not call. they're not even a local, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Don't have an 800 number, you know? And unfortunately, I had one of my locals with an 800 number, but we couldn't go back. But uh, another recommendation is I like to carry my own call tracking numbers because I got burned a long time ago. Uh, that the, the company I had used, they own that data. And before I knew it, there was five other garage door companies in that mailer because uh, they, just like the YP, Yellow Book was famous for this, they'd say, wow, you're killing it. All of a sudden, that rep goes out and sells it to two other companies, which is just something that, it's a recommendation that I would make is is own your own numbers. But for sure, if, if it's the best thing you could do by getting one from the company that you're doing mailers or doing online services with, get that trackable number. My CRM tracks the revenue. So I know the amount of leads, I know the amount we booked, I know the amount we closed on, and I know the amount of revenue. And that's the ultimate advantage. Totally, yeah, that's what I always, I, my focus, I, I'm, that is a big part of what I look at. It's cost per sale. Like a lot of the times right. people get hung up over on cost per lead or even per click. But like at right. the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you got a thousand clicks and didn't sell anything, you're, you're just an expense. You know, so getting it all the way down to, like you said, getting your per lead, cost and then try to get that cost down and the sale amount up you know spending your time really picking that apart i think a lot of people miss that no i i've had, oh. out of the business owners i asked they don't even know the answer to the question what's your cost per sale they don't know that answer and it's scary because i sell leads too i'll give them a, a performance base this is how much it costs for a lead and they go well that's that's more than my service call i go well you're probably not a good client for me if you're trying to collect the service call they're calling you with a broken thing at their home and you're saying it's a service call? Obviously, you need to reevaluate your numbers and figure out what you could pay because I'm giving you a guarantee. A phone call with somebody calling up requesting your service and if you can't afford that guarantee, then you need to recheck your business plan and see if this <laughs> is right or even if you're going to be in business in the next two years because yeah. my guess is with that kind of attitude, you won't be. Yeah. I'm sorry. And that's exactly right. I also, we, a lot of the times we'll take it to the next level and the call tracking lines, we would listen to the recording and we'll hear people answering the phone that don't even, aren't even aware of the offer that people are calling in about. And you know, when you're on, when you're on our side of this thing, you're like, you're, you're like, oh my God, you know how hard it is to get somebody to call you and you just yeah. act like you don't want to talk to them. I've heard him say, call me back in two weeks. We're booked up. I'm like, are you kidding me? Or they need like scripts. They need some training. Yeah, so well, it's, it's I, I, we'll talk about that too here in a minute. <laughs> I, all right, all right, I, we'll move on. So, um, okay, so I had next that you you combine or do like a one-two punch with direct mail and digital marketing. I know a lot of times it's hard to marry those up and, and, and find your, your, your attribution, they call it, where the lead originate so that you can really hone in on not wasting any of your budget. So like, how do you marry the two, direct mail and, and digital marketing? Well, there's, there's a lot of technology that most people don't know about. There's a thing called geofencing. And the best way I could describe geofencing is when you walk in and you got your uh, your location on your phone, whether it's an iPhone, Droid, or smartphone, you walk in AMF Bowling Alley, it'll pop up and it'll say, leave us a review. And that's a push notification to leave a review through Google. So what people got to understand is I could target anybody. I'll, I'll give you a great example. I geofence all my competition and all the manufacturers that they, awesome. the guys see an ad of work for a one when they walk in and uh, it's legal. It's, you know, I want to get skilled employees. So yep. it's like Applebee's targeting chilies. It's fine. Totally. Uh, pixeling, pixeling on Facebook, getting back in front of them. Pixeling just means if you click on my ad, it'll continue to show my ad again, retargeting on Google display ads, uh, programmatic targeting. I get programmatic, if I did an RSVP to a certain neighborhood in Scottsdale, I could programmatically target all those people watching Hulu tonight, then my ad will show up. So most people, and I don't want you guys, the, the viewers out there, to become experts in marketing. Combine yourself with a great marketing team that could do this stuff because I had to learn this stuff myself as well. And the one thing I will say is get your vehicles wrapped, okay? This is the low-hanging fruit. This is the easiest one out there. I mean, it's the number one source of all of our calls. And you're in these high-end neighborhoods. You should be, you should have a wrapped vehicle. I bought my own 
vehicle wrap equipment. I spent 75,000 bucks, but I paid it back in two months because we're growing and I wrap all my vehicles. But you'd be surprised how many jobs I get from that phone number on the vehicle wraps. It's, it's, it's mind blowing how many calls we get. So that's what I recommend is, is, is marry it all up with digital. Uh, you definitely want to do mailer. I believe in mailers. I do so much mailers. You name it, I still do it. But also get your vehicles wrapped. I think it's very important to do all three of those. That's awesome. So, so I know a lot of change. Things are changing all the time. You know, when I, I got to stay on the ball, especially in, in the digital side of stuff we do. Um, and I'm I'm doing some incredible stuff in Facebook right now. I, I'd love to tell you about. I get like. I, like incoming inbound phone calls from Facebook was the hardest thing I nailed down, but I nailed it down, like cracked it open, like cracked the code on that. We're just now starting to operate. But like, so with that mindset, like what's working best right now? Like change is coming, pivots you're making, things to watch out for. Well, a lot of times you'll talk about a funnel and I can tell you this, I became a information company. Uh, one of the gals that I, uh, that has, a lot of help with us on our PR side. She was at a uh, Domino's, was the head speaker at this convention. And they said, what What do you think? The CEO came out there and he said, what do you think we make the most money on? Is it crazy bread? Is it soda? Is it pizza? Is it pepperoni pizzas? And everybody guessed and he said, no, it's data. He said, data is the key. The So what do I have my guys write down? I know Look, we, we know what kind of thermostat. So if we can see the thermostat and it's a advanced Nest or something, we know that person's probably interested in more technology. So we want to update their opener, probably give them that kind of offer. The more data points you have, the more power you're going to have. Um, Google's teaming up with Walmart to go against Amazon. Amazon just came out with home services a few years ago, and it's becoming a monster. Home Advisor just bought Angie's List. This stuff... I don't think people understand me because you go, oh, I tried home and bull crap. That's not the case. You guys got to understand technology is happening. Facebook is by far the number one data aggregate because the average person spends something crazy, several, six, seven hours on there. And to build a funnel on Facebook, the point that I want to make here about Facebook is you're probably hitting them higher in the funnel, whereas Google, they're coming to you ready to go today. So a lot of times Google looks more promising, but if you understand this correctly, you're grabbing a customer that's gonna be ready, which will be a higher sale, and you're educating them a little higher in the funnel, but trust me, it's worth it, and you'll create more business if you learn Facebook correctly. Facebook bots are becoming really powerful, but I don't wanna confuse anybody. It's like you said, it, it could get yeah, mind-boggling yeah, to go very, into it, but but yeah, those are build, some of the building things. Building distribution list, that's what Facebook yeah. is incredible for. Facebook, and then, so many people are, are, they build this environment that my guys are all gonna quit if I start breaking out iPads. Or, or you know, I don't wanna have to focus on a website I never have before, why start now? Well, if you're really thinking about succession planning and how much is your business worth, you need to start thinking about technology and getting this stuff. I'm gonna look at your website. That's the first thing I wanna look at is how many leads are you bringing in? What is your website? What is your reputation online? And you know, people said Google Schmoogle five years ago. Now people are like, yeah, I gotta do it. Now I gotta get a website. Now I gotta do this. Now I gotta get an iPad for my guys. Well, embrace it and forget the status quo and build an environment of change within your company and you're gonna watch amazing things happen. Yeah, yeah, staying in front of it instead of trying to catch up when you have to. Because exactly. Because then you're, you're so far behind in the competition. So I know you have a coaching program and you're doing amazing with that. What are the biggest, what's like the biggest value bomb your coaching program offers business owners? So we do, we really dive into an eight step KPI process around your business. And we, we do a listening session. I just really want to hear because believe it or not, Jason, sometimes we can help you. Sometimes we can point you in the right direction. Uh, sometimes it, it might not be the right time for, for a company like us, but I got to ask you, you know, for me, I've always done better with, with somebody that taught me how to work out, even though I know how to work out, but it's accountability, right? I mean, have you ever had a, uh, totally. a coach that, that, yeah. a trainer? Yeah. When well, I have a trainer, I'm in much better shape just cause he pushes me and makes me show up. Yeah. And your diet's better and everything. Yeah. It's accountability. So, so, so we dive in and we teach business about the eight key elements and, uh, we drill into things like your average ticket. 
we, we dive into things like how are you attracting A players? We dive into things, what's your booking rate? I can tell you that the best companies in the world, the very, very best, hover around 80, 90, 90%. If you don't measure it, you're never going to know. And right now, a lot of people are probably saying, you know what? It's my wife, daughter, cousin, uh, people that have worked for me for 10 years. We're probably booking 80%. You're booking 55 or less, guaranteed. And I can show you, it's so easy how to measure it. There's so many companies out there that measure it. Next, I want to look at what's your average. There's so many KPIs that we need to understand. And if you don't even measure those things, we could give you simple, cheap, affordable tools that allow you to measure them. And don't advertise more until you fix these problems. Average ticket, conversion rates, booking rates. Those are the things we'll dive into because I love marketing. I love sales. And if you figure out these eight KPIs, you could go a ton with them. But the more, more than anything is accountability. You know, accountability is everything. So yeah, having an yeah. accountability coach is really what we are is saying, what's the most important thing you need to get done this week to get you to where you want to be? And we can help you do that. Yeah, that's great. That's absolutely phenomenal, man. I, I can't wait to see uh, some of your clients and see if maybe some of our clients and, and, and you get together. I think that'd be a great thing. Um, you, know, at, at, you know, with any parting words, words of wisdom. You know, we, uh, we, get, we, we do that discovery call. It's, it's homeserviceexpert.com uh, forward slash uh, discovery call. It's discovery dash call. It's 30 minutes. It's free. We don't charge any money to do it, but the most important thing is uh, really accountability is what it all comes down to. When you walk in your office, I want you to really think about this because I've done it a lot. I write down everything I got accomplished during a day, and a lot of times at the end of the week, we might have not got results. And we really need to ask ourselves, are we prioritizing right? Are we really going after the biggest things that's going to affect our business? And so many people, this is kind of cliche, but we work too hard in our business. We never work on our business. We find ourselves running around saying, I don't have enough time in the day. But then you look back and say, man, I spent the whole day putting out fires. But what if we could help you to create zero fires and actually act like a real leader within your business and get you results and get you that life you've always wanted? Now, it doesn't happen overnight. And just like a trainer, they can't give you the body, but they could give you the will and help you get there. So I think that that's half the battle is really taking the time to help you create accountability for yourself and pushing you to that next level. And that's what we try to do. And if we could do it, great. Some of the times we can't do it for our clients, but we'll tell you that up front. So uh, that would be my final final words of wisdom. That's great, man. That's great. You know what? I wanted to mention this. What What is your funnel on Facebook? I didn't plan on this, but I just had the thought. I wonder what you're doing. You want to share? So... No, yeah, there's a few different things because what we recently did is we got into really, really high end. Uh, we build our own custom doors. So part of the process uh, that we've come up with is actually education. So we teach people that 40% of your curb appeal is your garage door. One of my buddies, and I'll tell you more about that, but one of my buddies spends $10,000 a day on Facebook. He actually takes high debt. So whether you're in school debt, credit card debt, and he's the one that taught me this process. He said he put out this ad, how I went from a 430 credit score to a 620 within two months. And it takes over 20 hours to convert to a lead, but they go to a squeeze page. So everything leads to a squeeze page where they could get a free step-by-step uh, -step on how to do it. And then they just remarket to this person and say, let us get on the call with you. We'll show you how to do it. And it's amazing because the money that he brings in from this is, if I told you the numbers, I mean, he's multi, multi, multi millionaire, but the fact is the whole point is to grab that data. And now one of the things that I'm focusing on with another business with a, a colleague of mine is um, webinars. Driving people to a webinar is massive because the emails always go through from webinars and, and go to meeting is the biggest one, go to webinar. and. Uh, I recommend that the best because you could A-B test it. And once you get the perfect webinar, you just play it and you answer questions along the way. I mean, that's those are some of the keys that I recommend with Facebook. But uh, what's working for you right now? Um, the um, best campaigns I have running right now are for mold. It's a sort of, I call it the mold scare campaign. And I sort of bundle it up because I like we run campaigns all the time and I see like, like bird's eye view kind of thing of like little pieces that were working. So I put it all together 
and the like long story short the business owner gets text messages all day long with phone numbers and emails and names and he just clicks them and calls them and i tell him call them within five minutes and if they don't answer call them again and then the actual prospect from facebook they get they get an email drip so they're in that world and then they also get a text alert the prospect the bit the client you know the lead gets a text alert and then they get a call from the business owner and then they also have a call tracking line so they can call back and the whole thing is is uh, sort of it's predicated on f a first call basis. So here's your voucher, but it's it, you have to activate it, and it's on a first call basis. So if you don't call in, this is a useless voucher. So it, it prompts them to make the call in, and it's making them make the call. So I mean, it went from like what you said, top of the fennel stuff. It's hard to get from there to direct response. So right. I got it. I got. I like cracked it wide open. A direct response. We're getting phone calls every day and then we're getting emails and we're getting uh, text messages and and it triggers the uh it triggers the campaigns for remarketing and all this stuff is like so give me an example just tell me real quick so you you so you've got all the home services you've got all kinds of stuff in there so give me an example of of, of how that works because i understand you know we use twilio on everything pretty much we build our own api into yeah. that with a lot of stuff but go ahead give me an example yeah, we use Twilio. We we use like same with you. We've gone through so many CRMs and stuff. But um, so so okay. So to get nerdy about it, we went. We have um the Facebook lead ad, right? You know the different campaigns you can choose. Right. It's the lead ad because sending them outside of Facebook to a landing page, the conversion rate compared to a lead ad, not sending them out of the Facebook world, it was so much higher. So. The landing page we send them to that after the thank you so they get to the thank you page and then to, to download the voucher it goes to the landing page after that so let's i'm going to give you an hvac lead generator right now it's a mold scare news story right so hvac is one of those things where you want to it's like an emergency you go to google and you just search and then you go down and, and you call the the best review site probably pretty quick that's how you do it that's how the lead you normally gets captured so it's hard for hvac to like direct response it because you don't need it all the time so this is this is working like really well right now um, for for them. So it's a mold scare news story, and I call it a scare, but it's a real news story uh, about getting a mold, in, and it prompts them to get a mold inspection. It goes over a family um, who who broke open a wall to remodel or to, to get some mold out of the bathroom wall. It broke open mold spores. Their kids got sick. The parents got sick. They they developed things like diabetes and. Uh, vertigo and uh, chronic like fatigue and children like it was horrible horrible but that news story the video gets thousands of views the HVAC company site it, which you never get likes and follows and comments and shares it's getting that it's getting like people will tag their friends on the story and then it, it, it drives them at the end of the video to get a free mold inspection and that's where you capture the lead and then you're heading out there and now you got this relationship with homeowners and on Facebook the targeting is so robust you can put the income range high you can put the home ownership you can put oh, the yeah. home value range in there so the relationships are going great I will say this though there's holes in their targeting uh, but you, you still get the leads that you meant to target, but we're also getting tenants in there by accident. So uh, you have to put in the copy, um, you know, must be homeowner must be present to redeem, you know, homeowner, landlord must be present right. to redeem this voucher, you know, so you don't get a tenant falling through the cracks, which they will uh, if you don't say that. And then, you know, you got to double check on the phone. But then, you yeah. know, then then after that, I mean, it's really like I was saying, you got to get to the end converted sale. That's what really matters. Or you're just going to you're going to turn it off. So we. We make sure the follow-up is really, really immediate. So the, the 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 prospect gets a text right away. He also gets an email right away. And the text has a phone number direct to the business owner. And then the business owner also gets that text at the same time, and he gets the phone number and the email of the person. So they're directly linking right then. Right. And it's like, it's good, man. It works so, really well. So one of the things, uh, Harvard came out with a study uh, in 2012 that uh, don't quote me on this, but you're seven times more likely if you call within a half an hour and 60 times more likely within 24 hours. But what we did uh, is we actually built a process to where the form gets submitted. When that form gets submitted, the, the, the person on the other side, the customer gets a text, hey, really excited you're calling about our service. We'll be reaching out to you in the next couple minutes. Expect a number from this number. So they know to answer, 
And then literally it calls me in two minutes, the, the business owner, except it's one of my CSRs. And then it says, press one to connect with prospect. So now it's a real phone call. It's pushing it no matter what. You don't have a choice. I've got a call center. It makes it even easier to make that happen. It's just one of the steps we took further because, and then guess what happens? If my CSRs don't answer that, there's, there's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> but that way we're touching base with them in real time, and it's so important. And to let the client know, expect a call from this number, and it's pushing it. And we built all this through Twilio. But uh, one of the things, you, you reminded me of one small thing I just wanted to add is uh, I met with a guy. I'm not going to go into names or companies, but the guy is one of the biggest in, in Arizona. You know, He's all over the place. If I mentioned him, most people would know who he is. But uh, half of his team was calling outbound. And they were calling their one of, I think he's got 30,000 uh, uh, service agreements. And he said, Tommy, let me tell you one thing about this business. <laughs> this blew me away. He goes, 75% of the service agreements we run, we're going to collect more than 100 bucks on. 25%, we just go there, change the filters, do what we need to do, clean the coil, whatever. 40% of them. They moved it from 25 to 40 over the last two years. We're going to sell a new unit. And he goes, because we know the exact age, we know what's going to save them money, and we've got all this stuff. So the people calling outbound are setting us up and setting up the right guy to go there to have the right things to say, it's time. Based on last year's evaluation That's and what huge. you need, the technology, those are crazy stats. Over 60% of his income comes from the service agreements because of the future sales. It's not about reoccurring income as much as it is about you being that company that's out there every year. So if you're a grazer company, you're out there. When they're ready to replace it, you're there. So service agreements are the ultimate machine when it comes to home service. I don't care what it is. They didn't think it was possible in the grazer industry. We did it. So That is an incredible point. You, so, you, yeah, data. So you said you, you can – did they already have the information because they sold the original unit or you can actually get by the data so you get the age dates, of unit? Look, you got the dates. You got the thermostat model they have on there. You got the last time you got the – they're taking all these KPIs off of the unit. Here's oh, so how, after they is, go there, then that's how they get the date. You can't target by date of unit. You can't target until you grab that data. So the service agreements, that's why they do a $9.99 will change your filters because they're grabbing that data. The whole goal of going out there is not to sell them a bunch of stuff. It's to get them that service contract. Because guess what? If you got a service contract with your Mercedes at the dealership, do you think you're going to go to Amco for a transmission? You're going to go back to that dealership. You've got a service agreement. You're getting cheaper parts. You're getting better service. You're going to that company. The service agreements, who cares what you charge for it? The fact is you're there every time. And trust me, there's houses in Scottsdale that will spend $50,000 on five wood overlay garage doors. So... The point is get in front of the right customers, which RSVP helps you do, but sell that service agreement. There's more money in service agreements. And if you know about selling a company, they go off of EBITDA. Most companies will get three to five times EBITDA. If you're lucky, you could get 10. If you sell service agreements, you're gonna get 15 to 20 times. Basically, EBITDA is profit, earnings before interest, tax, and appreciation. So it's mind boggling, it blew my mind, and I hope it blows some of your, your listeners because it. It was an amazing lesson for me, and it got me excited again about my service contracts. That's awesome. Well, that's great, man. I'm really glad to meet you. I hope I get to talk to you again. Yeah, and, we uh, will for sure. Yeah, it's good, dude. So, uh, yeah, if you don't have any, anything else that you got, anything else you want to add? Anything you left out? No, man. I think I hit everything. I'm just, you know, we launched a podcast. Maybe I could get you on mine. It's it's yeah. the homeserviceexpert.com forward slash podcast. Been interviewing a lot of cool people, so homeserviceexpert.com forward slash podcast. And, uh, you know, I had a great time. And, and honestly, I, I really do. I use your mailers. It's funny because uh, they do very, very, very well. I, I met a guy that does – this is the last thing I'll finish up on. I met a guy that does custom doors, uh, entry doors, security doors. And I said, what's your best advertising? And this was two weeks ago. He said, have you ever heard of RSVP? I said, yeah, I use them. He goes, RSVP is my number one advertising source I use. I said, huh. I said, that's amazing. Do you use Google or anything? He's like, yeah, of course. We use pay-per-click and everything, but we kill it because they actually see an image. It's a beautiful door on the house, you know, on their type of home. So, you know, it really is a lot of people that mailers aren't working for are not doing them right. I could guarantee you that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's so true. That's good, man. 
So we'll we'll meet again. Until then, All right, I'm Jason, Jason Trove from RSVP. You're watching Exponential Opportunities, where we help business owners grow. I'll see you next time, All right, man. man. <laughs> Take Thank you very much. We'll talk soon, buddy. All right, man. See you. See you later.